Hey Houseplay friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to be giving you a general genus overview for some of the most popular starting genuses that new plant parents find themselves being interested in. But before we get into the video, please like and subscribe if you haven't yet. Maybe you've been binge watching my videos and you forgot to hit that subscribe button. Welcome to the community. I also have a Patreon you guys can check out if you want more Plant Me Ashley content like private voice chats, videos, your name on the end card. There's multiple different tiers you guys can join if you are interested in that stuff. The genuses that I am going to be running you guys through are Philodendron, Rufidophora, Monstera, Anthurium, Calathea, Hoya, and Begonia. There are other popular starting genuses, but I personally don't feel like I am knowledgeable about them enough to talk about them. This keeps rubbing. Stop it. To talk about them, so I'm just going to be running you guys through the ones that I feel like I know best and feel like I can actually give you advice on. To start, we have Philodendron. This is probably the most popular genus that people find themselves getting into when they join the houseplant community. It's definitely my favorite genus when I joined the community. I fell in love with this website called Ken's Philodendrons, and you can just scroll through like hundreds and hundreds of different species of Philodendron, and I lost my mind <laughs> in it. Seriously, it was crazy. So for Philodendron, you want an average humidity of 45 to 80%. The reason I wouldn't go above 80 is because philodendron really don't benefit from any higher humidity. In fact, you can actually melt your plant's leaves. I did that with my Adiba Poensee. I actually took it out of the greenhouse when I lived at the old apartment because two of its leaves just melted off because the humidity was way too strong and it was 98% humidity in there. So 100% humidity isn't always the best despite what I may have thought otherwise a while ago. So for philodendron, I wouldn't recommend any higher than 80, maybe 85%, uh, especially depending on what lighting conditions you have. It is notable though that the higher your humidity is, the faster your philodendron will grow. So you want to have it higher than lower. The soil mix that I personally use for philodendron, and I use black gold, which is a brand of soil. So the names I'm gonna be listing of the soil, cause I don't make my soil from scratch, like I don't just buy the ingredients, I buy black gold and then I mix that stuff together. For my epiphyte mix, which I make for my philodendron, and you're gonna see this mix again here, is one third orchid bark, one third cactus mix, and one third potting soil. I also find that terracotta pots are the best for philodendron. You can also keep them in a cash pot and a ceramic pot is, I would say, okay if there's drainage holes, but I wouldn't do a ceramic pot if there's no drainage holes because philodendron really don't like to have their roots wet for long periods of time. Philodendron prefer bright, indirect light. No direct light, their leaves will burn. That is what happened to my Billy tie right here. <laughs> He got too much light, so keep a sheer curtain in front of our windows. And some good starting plants for this genus, I would say, is the Philodendron Pink Princess if you're looking for something a little bit more rare and exotic. Super easy to grow, grows really fast, very loving plant. It will give you a lot of leaves and you'll fall in love with it. And then for something not so exotic, I would definitely recommend Philodendron Mykins, Philodendron Burl Marks, and then if you're really still looking to scratch that rare itch, Philodendron Billy Tie. But I do want to warn you guys, the price on this plant has been going going up a lot lately, so make sure that you wait to find one until you can actually find one for a good price. For example, this one I got for sixty-five dollars. You are going to want you're going you're going to want to water your philodendron when the plant droops to the side, or depending on the type of philodendron. For example, Mykins, its leaves will curl inwards when it needs to be watered. Billy tie won't curl; the whole thing will droop. The next genus we're going to talk about is Raphidophora. People say Raphidophora, Raphidophora. I know that there's another way that people say it. I think that the best humidity to keep Raphidophora is 55% to 80%. I'm still experimenting with this, but in there seems to be where they grow the fastest. I use the exact same soil mix as the philodendron mix, which is one third potting soil, one third orchid bark, and one third cactus mix. I find that Raphidophora also enjoy bright indirect light, and then you can get Give them very low amounts of direct sunlight as long as it's not on a, like a super hot day. You're going to want to water your Raphidophora when your soil is really really dry. I let my Raphidophora dry out and it seems to work really well for it. I would want to keep Raphidophora in a plastic pot with holes at the bottom or a terracotta pot or again a ceramic pot with holes at the bottom. Raphidophora and philodendron seem to be very similar with their likes and dislikes. 
dislikes. If you're going to want to get a Raphidophora, I definitely would recommend starting with a Raphidophora tetrasperma, which is the most popular form of Raphidophora I have found. You might also know that as a mini monstera plant or a philodendron jenny, even though it is not a philodendron at all. And if you're looking to try something more difficult and a little more rare, there is, you could try a Raphidophora pertusa, which looks like a Raphidophora tetrasperma, or there is also Raphidophora heii, which is similar to Monstera dubia. The next genus we have is Anthurium. Anthurium prefer a higher average humidity of 65 to 95%. I have kept Anthurium before above that, but again, it tends to start to melt their leaves or their soil just doesn't dry out enough. So it can lead to root rot, which I've definitely had problems with. For Anthurium, I mix orchid bark with cactus mix, again from Black Gold, because I just find that they really like a more airy mix, a lighter mix, something that drains really well. Because the, the roots on Anthurium tend to be more succulent, they're thicker, so those roots will hold more water, unlike philodendron roots, which are very thin and narrow and honestly like little fine hairs. So you can give them less water and they'll suck it all up and then hold it in their roots. So it's not like punishing your plant for, you know, having a really well draining mixture. I personally only keep Anthurium in either moss in a plastic pot or like cement or ceramic, or I keep it in that mix I just told you about in a terracotta pot with drainage holes. I keep my anthurium in low to medium indirect light. That's where they seem to do the best. Bright light does not become anthurium most of the time. Again, it depends on the type, but it, they really prefer more shade anthurium like to grow on the ground floor of rainforests and cloud forests, so they really don't like that direct light at all, or even bright light. You're going to want to water your anthurium when it literally, the whole thing starts to droop. I used to have an ace of spades, and if this is the pot and this is the plant, when it would need water, the whole plant would fall over to the side. I'd water it and come back in two hours and the whole thing would be standing up. I don't know. <laughs> That's just how I keep track of when my anthurium need water. Some easy starters for anthurium would be an ace of spades, which is a velvet leaf anthurium. An anthurium clarinarvium, which I actually have right here. It is another velvet leaf anthurium. It's very sparkly when you shine your flash on it. And anthurium forgetii, which is also a velvet leaf anthurium. But then there are the bird's nest anthuriums like philodanthurium plowmanii, anthurium, I can't remember what it's called. It's the one that's like a leathery. Well, there's anthurium vitarfolium, which is another good one to start with, very easy. More expensive though. And then if you're wanting a very hard anthurium to try, I'd say anthurium more aquianum is a good place to start with difficult anthurium. The next genus on my list is Calathea. Calathea like an average humidity of 30 to 70%. I would try to stay on the lower end with Calathea just because like I keep my Calathea around 40 to 50. They seem to do the best there. When they get too wet, the leaves can again rot. I would say 70 is good if you have like more dry humidity instead of like really wet humidity. So like hot humidity versus cold mist, right? Hot mist versus cold mist. I keep my Calathea usually in their nursery pots with the nursery soil that they get because I don't like to mess with their roots because it makes them upset. But if I were to repot a Calathea, I would use potting soil and cactus mix and I would mix that together again from black gold. Calathea like low to medium light, I wouldn't even think about giving it bright and direct light. I would give it low to medium light and they grow really fast in that environment. You're going to want to water your Calathea when the leaves start to curl up or they droop down and look just sad. So some easy starter plants that I own are Calathea Beauty Star, Calathea Macoyana, and Calathea Ornata. All of these Calathea are extremely easy to take care of. Very, very fuss free, not dramatic at all, and anyone can take care of it very easily. Oh, and Calathea orbifolia also is very easy to take care of, even though everyone says it's not. It is, I promise. I would keep Calathea in a ceramic or plastic pot. Calathea like to keep their roots a little bit more wet, so in a ceramic pot, you're going to be fine. It's going to love staying wet, so. The next genus on our list is Monstera. Monstera like an average humidity, I would say of 45 to 70%. Monstera do not benefit, unless it's a terrarium Monstera, Monstera like Monstera dubia, Monstera deliciosa, Monstera panati partita, and others of the similar type Adamsonii do not benefit from excessively high humidity. In fact, it will melt the leaves, especially if it is a uh, variegated 
um, aeroid. Like I would definitely make the highest year humidity for variegated monsteras around 60 to 60 to 70 and no higher because when I was keeping my variegated monstera in my greenhouse it just the white would melt off all the time and it was just so frustrating and so finally a couple people were like you know you should try lower humidity mine used to melt and then i moved it to lower humidity and now it's doing great and i did that and now my monster <laughs> variegated is doing great so highly recommend keeping it to a more natural humidity level especially if your variegated monstera is from the americas and not imported if it's imported then that's a little bit of a different story the potting mix that i use for monstera is one third potting soil, one-third cactus mix, and one-third orchid bark. I only keep monstera in terracotta pots. I don't even put them in cash pots because the plastic just is not the best. I find that monstera really really thrive when they get to grab on to stuff because of their aerial roots and they really like to grab on to the terracotta and that makes them feel like they've supported their self on something. So I would definitely do terracotta pot if you have a monstera. My monstera really enjoy bright indirect light and the lowest they can tolerate is a medium light. But uh, if you wanted to give your monstera something a little brighter like maybe off and on bright light, just make sure that your leaves aren't bleaching out. And as long as they're not doing that, then they're definitely fine. I water my monstera when the soil is dry. There's really no way that I've been able to tell when like a physical sign of when monstera need water. So I try to just pay really good attention to the soil, lift up the pot, see if it's super light. You can also use a hydrometer, which is a um, tool you stick in the soil. It tells you what the water is like, the water retention is like in your soil. But I definitely only water my monstera when it is dry as a desert. Some easy starters for monstera are monstera deliciosa, monstera adansonii, and monstera standaliana albo. I would say a more medium difficulty plant is a Monstera Borzigiana Alba, which is what I have. And if you want something a little more difficult because it takes a really long time to grow, I would say Monstera Thai Constellation is definitely the most difficult plant people seem to struggle with when it comes to Monstera. The second to last plant on this list is the Hoya genus or Ashley's favorite genus. <laughs> the average humidity you're going to want to keep for Hoya is 30 to 95. It's a huge range. As long as you're not dropping below 30, your Hoya are going to be doing just fine. I use a little bit more of a complex mix when I use, when I pot up my Hoya. I use a potting soil mixed with perlite, mixed with cactus mix, mixed with a little bit of orchid bark. I definitely go a little ham on the perlite just to keep it more airy. I definitely prefer to keep Hoya in terracotta pots or in a, in a plastic pot inside of a cash pot, like, you know, a nursery pot. They seem to do really well in there. I like to give my Hoyas cuter pots because I enjoy them, so they get the best treatment. <laughs> I give my Hoyas bright direct and bright indirect light. It's about bright direct light on them for about five hours a day, and then it's bright indirect for the morning and then lower light in the evening, and they're loving it. I might get some grow lights to supplement to keep them sun stressing because they're losing their sun stress. Because of the apartment, I would have 24 seven those grow lights on over them, so they were sun stressing, but now they're not really sun stressing so much. I water when the leaves either wrinkle, like prune when you get out of a hot tub, or when the leaves are soft. Like you can just fully bend it without it even cracking because the leaves aren't stiff anymore, they're soft. So um, awesome starters for Hoya would be Hoya pubicalix, Hoya carnosa, Hoya carnosa crimson princess, Hoya bella, Hoya carii, Hoya lacunosa, Hoya rebecca, or any of the Hoya carnosa compacta variegatas. I have the monoloa right here, which is reverse variegated, and I have the normal uh, Hoya carnosa compacta right here. You definitely need to water Hoya carnosa compacta much deeper than other Hoyas, I've noticed. It takes a little bit more for them to plump up. But Hoya in general are just not that difficult unless you're importing one from a different country, because then it's used to growing in, different, in a different environment, and your environment in America is not gonna be most likely what it needs unless you live in Florida or Texas or, you know, someplace like that. The last genus on this list is begonia. I prefer to keep begonia between 60 to 95 percent humidity. It does depend on the begonia. For example, we have begonia gogoensis, which is right here, and it is 49 percent humidity in this room right now, and it's doing just fine. That begonia, I found, even though it's a more rare begonia, really prefers not super high levels of humidity. The high levels of humidity make it kind of melt, whereas all of my other begonias are in this terrarium 
This terrarium is 93% humidity right now and all of them are thriving. That would be my Begonia Jalau, my Begonia Malachisticta, my Begonia Milana Bolada, my Begonia Jalau, or I said that twice, my Begonia Jehoiai. So those guys really, really, really prefer high humidity. So that's why it's kind of like a range. 60 is like a good base range for it growing fast. And then 90 is like, you know, in your terrarium. I usually don't repot begonia when I get them because I'm still anxious about ruining their leaves. So usually they come to be in moss or a super, super airy but water retentive soil uh, with a lot of perlite in it. I also keep them in plastic or ceramic pots. For a while I had a monster, monster a begonia darfidariana. I kept it in a ceramic pot and it loved that. The only reason I don't still have that plant was because it was my first rare begonia and obviously I didn't know what I was doing. You're going to want to give your begonias low to medium indirect light. Remember, low light does not mean no light, it means low light. And then I water my begonias in the terrarium when the humidity drops, and then I water my begonias that are out in the world when their leaves barely start to sag, when they start to look a little limp, so maybe the leaves look like they're a little thin, it just doesn't look like it's doing the best, that's when I water them, and you're gonna wanna make sure to keep your begonias more evenly moist, because if you let them dry out, then they're just going to die on you. <laughs> Easy starters begonias, I would say, is Begonia maculata whitei. That's pretty easy to find now too. Begonia escargo. And then if you're looking to try something a little bit more difficult but uh, forgiving, I would say Begonia malachisticta is good. That's like the easiest rare begonia I've ever grown and it's doing really, really well for me right now. So that is my video on an overview of popular houseplant genuses for beginning plant parents. I hope that this was helpful. I know I ran through them pretty fast, but I really wanted this to be the information that you need to know without being a deep dive on each specific genus. So hopefully these care tips can help you when you're starting out with your new plants. Also, welcome to the plant community, all you new plant parents who are watching this video. I hope that you have a great time. I hope that you stay a long time and I hope that your life just gets so much better because of plants. And remember, you never have, you never run out of room for plants. There's always room for more plants. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or you want to know more about each specific genus in the comment section, please leave a comment. I will respond to you. I will answer all of your questions about different genuses. Um, and then if you want to know about a genus I didn't list in this video, I, I can totally give you tips, but just be aware I don't have a lot of experience with other genuses. But other than that, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and tweet me at PlantMeAshley. I do a Patreon if you are interested in more Plant Me Ashley content. It costs $1 to join the Discord and $5 to join the end card that you are about to see. So again, thanks so much for watching and leave me any comments. I'll see you in the next houseplant section. Goodbye! <laughs>